Well, look at this amazing series of strata. They're dipping down into the west, they bottom out, now they're dipping down into the east, and now they're dipping to the west again. This is a spectacular anticline syncline pair. Well, this spectacular pair of folds is part of the Patterson Creek Mountain Anticlinorium. And this is one of these large scale regional structures that runs from the northeast down to the southwest through this part of the Valley and Ridge province. And the uh, style of folding here is kind of boxy. We've got fairly straight limbs and fairly crisp, well-defined hinges for the main thick units. However, if you zoom in on the center of the upper part of the syncline here, uh, and this is best probably done using the gigapan, you'll see a lot of smaller scale parasitic folds. And so the orientation of those parasitic folds is more or less the same as the orientation of the larger scale folds. And even these quote unquote large scale folds are actually smaller than the overall Patterson Creek Mountain and Anticlinorium. So this is uh, an illustration of Pompelli's rule, right? The idea that small scale structures can teach us about larger regional scale structures, that they tend to have the same orientation. Now the strata that are being folded here are strata that belong to the uh, Tanalaway Formation. Um, some people would break out the Wills Creek Formation, but these are tidal flat carbonates that probably formed in a Sabka type environment, something like the modern day Persian Gulf, where um, there were really high rates of evaporation. And we know that there were high rates of evaporation because we have evaporite minerals here. So. Uh, actually, let me correct myself. We don't have evaporite minerals. We have the casts of evaporite minerals. So in these uh, rock layers, you can frequently find both halite casts and gypsum casts. Plus, there are plenty of other indications of shallow hypersaline conditions. We've got uh, certain beds that are just covered with dead ostracods. There are also some nice mud cracks in certain places that show desiccation at uh, the Earth's surface in the open air. So it's a really nice place, a real wonderland to kind of explore, both in terms of the structural geology, but also in terms of these primary sedimentary structures that speak to us about these very different conditions that prevailed here in the past. Here's an example of some of these little gypsum casts. You can see a bunch of them sort of randomly oriented here in this slab. Uh, so those are indications that the water has gotten saline enough to precipitate gypsum, but then that gypsum got buried and then uh, dissolved away and we're left with these little casts that show us its shape. Here's an example of some salt casts, all right, where we've got um, little tiny cube shapes that have been preserved uh, indicating the former presence of halite crystals. Here's a look at some of the strata. You can see that they're really, really thinly laminated layers, okay? Indicating really low energy at the time of deposition. And here, of course, if we trace out any one of those layers, we can see that they make little stair-step jogs, and that's an indication of the folding, which is due to the Alleghenian uh, episode of Appalachian mountain building, the Alleghenian orogeny. So while these strata are Silurian in age, the folding that we observe here is in fact late Paleozoic in age. So it's uh, due to the collision of Africa with ancestral North America, Gondwana with Laurasia, if you prefer those terms. And that's why these strata have been folded into this shape.